I know many of you were concerned that no one would watch every episode of That's So Raven during this global health crisis. Fortunately for you, I stepped up and took on the responsibility to view all 100 episodes of this show for children. At 22 minutes an episode, I have now consumed greater than 36 hours of that So Raven content. All for you. I did this for you. Go now, and rest easy. If you're still watching this video, I can only imagine it's because you don't believe me. I don't blame you. It's an audacious and upsetting claim. Still, if my word of honor isn't enough, while watching, I meticulously kept notes on the core principle of the show, i.e. the visions. During my viewership, I've gleaned some insights into the show that I will now present for you, my skeptics. If you're older than 20, you are probably generally aware of the premise of the show That's So Raven. That's So Raven was a mid-2000s sitcom on the Disney Channel. The show's titular character, Raven Baxter, possessed a trait that let her glimpse into the future at random intervals, usually once or twice an episode. This ability frequently put Raven and her friends and family in these wacky and unpredictable situations. This Emmy-winning original program was responsible for the Disney Channel's highest ratings since the channel's launch in 97, and prompted two separate spin-off series, including one of the greatest animes of all time. In its 100-episode run, the longest of any Disney Channel show to that point, the plot of That's So Raven was largely consistent episode to episode, there are scenes that showcase a slice of Raven's adolescent life. Raven is interrupted by a vision of the future, which introduces or exacerbates a conflict in the story. The cast attempts to either ensure or subvert the vision, often via costumed hijinks. The vision ends up happening anyway. The audience learns a Disney-approved lesson. The episode ends and I take a shot of hard alcohol. Repeat 99 times. Over the course of the four seasons that make up That So Raven, there are between 148 and 150 visions. I'll get into the reason for the ambiguity in a minute. Not all of these visions are experienced by Raven, and not all visions are consistent in how they manifest. As a man of science, I developed a set of criteria against which each vision event was evaluated. I did this because seeing into the future is really not as straightforward as you might think. Those of you familiar with the show will recall that each vision is precipitated by Raven having a moment where she glances off screen, the camera centers on her face, and there's a zoom effect into her eyes. While this series of actions would probably be considered the standard for casual viewers, not all visions follow this exact formula. So, rather than exclude visions that didn't match this template, I redefined what counted as a vision. My criteria is as follows. One, a supernatural occurrence takes place in the episode. Two, said occurrence portends an event or series of events. Three, the character experienced the occurrence, recognizes it as supernatural within the logic of the show. And finally, the occurrence is specific, providing clear details to the character. Now you might be thinking this is overdoing it and stupid, but you're only half right. You see, these were important testing points and came into play frequently throughout my analysis. For example, Raven experiences vibes, or feelings about a situation, that give her a general sense of the future. I didn't remember these vibes when I first watched the show, you know, when I was a child, but they happen frequently enough. In Season 1, Episode 8, Saving Psychic Raven, 
She has her first set of vibes, which manifest as a fuzzy premonition of two people being mad at her. Under my criteria, these vibes don't count as visions, because they're vague. Even with my enhanced definition in place, there were still two visions that scurried the line of criteria. I elected to include these two into my analyses, but they warranted enough consideration on my part to be worthy of a disclaimer. I'll talk about them now, so any academics watching can decide for themselves whether to include them in any publications on the topic. The first vision was in that same episode, Season 1, Episode 8, Saving Psychic Raven. Raven experiences a vision that alerts her to imminent danger to Dr. Sleevemore, a recurring character who specializes in psychic traits. The show makes the choice, probably because of graphic violence, not to display the vision to the audience, which makes it unclear just how specific the vision was. The same thing happens with a disco ball in Season 2, Episode 15, He's Got the Power. Still, the vision gave Raven enough foresight to warn Dr. Sleevemore about the danger, so I kept it in the count. The second vision is Season 1, Episode 19, Escape Clause. In the show's Christmas episode, Santa Claus sends Raven back in time to before a vision had occurred. Going back in time might mean that the vision technically didn't happen in the show's universe, but I wasn't sure whether that's so Raven followed Back to the Future or Terminator time travel rules. So I kept it in. With those out of the way, we move on to the analysis. Starting with some quick stats, 150 visions, over 100 episodes, makes for some easy math. The show has an average of 1.5 visions per episode. However, the season with the highest density of visions is season 1, with almost 2 visions per episode. That's 39 visions across 21 episodes, with 3 episodes having more than 3 visions. The single episode with the most visions is in season 3, episode 7, Double Vision, which, in spite of its title, has a staggering nine total visions. The longest vision is easily season two, episode two, Don't Have a Cow. The whole episode is practically a single vision. The next longest vision is season two, episode 13, Radioheads, at about 90 seconds in length. Don't Have a Cow is described by a few publications as the scariest episode in That's So Raven. But for my money, Season 3, Episode 5, Five Finger Discount, has a much more frightening scene involving a poorly CGI'd monkey toy. Each episode has at least one vision, but it would appear quantity doesn't always lead to quality when it comes to psychic occurrences. Out of 150 total visions, 123, or about 82%, take place or are implied to take place. Before we unload what that means, let's talk about the people having the visions. Yes, I said people as in plural. Not all 150 visions are experienced by Raven. Two other psychics make guest appearances in the show for one episode each, for a total of three psychics. You have Ben, who is a romantic interest for Raven's friend Chelsea, he appears in Season 3, Episode 7, Double Vision, and experiences four visions, including what I had dubbed as a Double Vision slam a where he and Raven experience the same vision simultaneously. Eddie, who temporarily gains psychic powers in Season 2, Episode 15, He's Got the Power, has seven visions after holding a disco ball outside during a Comets Perihelion event. And of course, Raven, who leads the pack with the remaining 139 visions in the show. Now, if you're as deranged as I am, you're probably wondering which of these fictional characters are most accurate at predicting the fictional future. The answer may surprise you. It's Raven. Despite having the fewest visions, 
Ben got the future wrong on literally his first attempt. How embarrassing. Even though he nails the following three visions, that still only leaves him with a 75% accuracy rate. Eddie doesn't do any better. A 5 out of 7 leaves him with a less than perfect score of 71%. That leaves our queen as the undisputed future seeing champion with 115 out of 139 total visions taking place. That's 83% of the time. While Raven's visions frequently come true, I took the liberty of setting up categories of truth. For example, it often turns out that Raven has misinterpreted the context surrounding the vision. Like in Season 1, Episode 20, Separation Anxiety, when she sees her parents splitting up and interprets it as a pending literal divorce. There are 44 such visions where the context of the vision is different from the obvious interpretation, creating something of a self-fulfilling prophecy. There are also 12 instances where the vision is implied to happen, but it doesn't explicitly happen in the episode. Like in Season 3, Episode 28, Country Cousins, when Raven psychically unmasks the scary Scarecrow as her cousin BJ. BJ. Or the vision is just slightly off, as was the case in Season 2, Episode 19, The Lying Game, when Raven sees her parents breaking the family couch and spilling popcorn. But in reality, the popcorn is removed before the couch can be broken. There are five episodes where the vision effectively happens. That makes 54 visions that are entirely correct and unambiguous. So while Raven often gets the future right, her interpretation is about 50-50. From there, we go to the remaining 23 visions that Raven had throughout the show, the bulk of which, 20 to be specific, don't actually happen. Unfortunately for Calvinists in the audience, it appears that the Ravenverse is not deterministic. Of these 20 visions, all save for one are prevented from occurring because of Raven's intercession. Meaning, Raven is quite capable of changing the future. The single very odd exception is in Season 4, Episode 15, soup to nuts, when Raven has a vision of her principal retiring after she causes him to hurt his back. However, the principal specifically doesn't retire and reveals he did not do so because Raven's actions actually fixed his back. Well, that's a great twist. Thinking about it, that means the vision was totally false. Raven didn't need to take further action to prevent it, because the principal was already on course not to retire. It's like the vision was almost trolling Raven for some reason. Her visions do cause problems for her from time to time, but this is the only instance where a vision flat out lies to Raven. This late in the show's run, maybe the writers were just running out of steam. If you're keeping Kai at home, as I know you are, You'll note that my math doesn't quite add up. Raven has 139 visions in total. 115 of those come true in some form or another, and 23 don't. But that doesn't add up to the full 139. Indeed, my little mathematicians, there is one vision outstanding that I didn't categorize using a binary did or did not. And that vision is the mushroom vision. <laughs> Some privacy. Raven is allergic to mushrooms. This is a plot point in Season 3, Episode 21, Chef Man and Raven, when her father takes Raven to a cooking contest, and she swells up due to the presence of mushrooms in the recipe. Thirteen episodes later, in Season 3, Episode 34, Vision Impossible, Chelsea supplies Raven with an organic shampoo that has mushroom as an ingredient, and it, I don't know, seeps into her brain, I guess? 
Is that how shampoo works? Anyway, Raven has one vision that is way out there, and it didn't really seem right to say that this vision didn't take place. Revisiting my set of criteria for a vision, it technically breaks rule two, since it doesn't portend anything. But it was probably supposed to, right? Like the pituitary gland or whatever part of the brain that sends up the visions meant to send one thing, but it got confused because of the mushroom allergy. I don't know. The nature of Raven's visions is definitely a concept worth exploring. Throughout the show, we meet other psychics and interact with mystical voodoo stuff, so magic is clearly real in the Ravenverse, even if it's stigmatized. But Raven's psychic ability has a biological element to it that can be interfered with by allergies, so there's the possibility that it's just an inherited mutation that allows the user to tap into the future. This is supported by the existence of the spin-off, Raven's Home, where Raven has a child that seemingly inherits psychic ability. But Eddie temporarily getting psychic powers from a comet sort of shuts down the idea that psychic powers are inherited or stem from a mutation. I guess both could be true. I had a theory involving a trickster god, but this video is already starting to get a little bit long, so I'll just leave it out for now. So yeah, we're, we're pretty much done with the analysis now. As far as the show, on the whole, That's a Raven is pretty good. Season 1 felt pretty weak, but it really grew into its own as the show progressed and my mental state worsened. I wouldn't go so far as to recommend watching all of it, but there are some really choice episodes. Like Season 3, Episode 6, Sweeps, when Raven puts on a musical, and the musical turns out to be really pretty good. Or Season 2, Episode 21, My Big Fat Pizza Party, where Raven and Chelsea make a huge pizza using skis and sewing needles. Instant classic. My favorite was probably Season 2, Episode 18, The Road to Audition, when all the students of Bayside High perform these elaborately choreographed performances for an undercover talent scout. I like musicals. Sue me. There are also some flagship episodes that deal with heavier issues. Season 4, episode 22, Where There Is Smoke, talks about the health concerns of cigarettes. Season 3, episode 25, Extreme Quarry, shows how peer pressure can be dangerous. Season 3, episode 10, True Colors, deals with racism and explores black history. Season 3, episode 35, Four Aces, focuses on aging and how getting older can change people. Many other episodes showcase how friends can have differences or take issue with each other, but still remain friends. A staple of each episode is that Raven always has her friends to fall back on, and even though they may annoy each other, they're always around to help when she needs them. In the end, I think That's So Raven is really a show about friendship, and it's a good one. If you liked content like this, well, don't subscribe to my channel. I definitely do not make content like this. Not regularly. The only reason I made this was because of a Reddit thread, like four months ago. But if you're interested in low effort mash em up videos, then boy are you in luck. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you are interested in content like this and you're one of my regular 240 subscribers, then let me know in the comments that you're a bunch of sadists and you want me to punish myself in new and creative ways.